Savala, a cloud hosting service built on top of Google Cloud Platform and Cloudflare. It allows you to deploy anything anywhere in the world and just forget about any sort of complexity. It's got a wide range of services that you can use. So if you're trying to host your next Laravel application, you can use their application hosting. Quite often, you're gonna to need to store images and files somewhere, not on the same server that your web application is running in. So you can leverage their object storage for that. Most real applications these days need some form of database. So you can use their database hosting to keep your data safe. How about that pesky marketing site that you always forget to deploy? Leverage static site hosting on Savala. Let's take a quick tour around the Savala web application to get ourselves familiar. As you log in, you'll be greeted by your dashboard. As you can see, I've got a database service running and an application running. And I can quickly and easily see my spending overview of how much I've spent this current billing period. It's clean, it's easy to navigate. It's definitely not an AWS dashboard. As we click into our main project that I've got running, you can see straight away what services are running within this project. You can also see whereabouts on GitHub and which branch is being deployed for this application as well. I can see which settings within Cloudflare are enabled or currently disabled. And I'll see a quick list of latest deployments. This view, as your application grows, becomes more and more valuable. As you can see on the left-hand side, I've got quick links to go to any aspect that might be important for running this project. But let's not just leave it there. Let's actually try a deployment and see what the process actually looks like. We can select the branch that we'd like to deploy and skip any app building, which is something I'll talk about in a moment. While we wait for our application to be built, you can see in the deployment logs the steps that it's going through. Once it's finished, it'll let you know that the process has been deployed and if you go back to your project overview, you'll see that the web process is now running and you'll see that there is a deployment listed and how long that took to deploy. So let's take a look around the UI. If we go down to logs, you'll see that we've got an active log of everything that's going on within our application. If we head over to analytics, you'll see we've got an overview of the memory, the CPU, request per minute, response time, and more. We can manage our environment variables, which is extremely handy, especially when working with Laravel. You get an overview of what processes are already running. With an option to create new processes such as background workers or cron jobs or background jobs. And you can also see anything to do with networking. Finally, you can see you're getting connect through to the web terminal, allowing you to access things such as PHP Artisan or any other bash command that you might want to use. Finally, you can invite users to your project to properly collaborate on projects, as we're not all solo developers. As I mentioned earlier, when you're deploying your application, you've got an option to skip the app build steps. Now, unless you've made certain changes to something at the infrastructure layer or 
a dependency or anything like that, then you can quickly just skip that application build because the environment's not changed. You can skip those build steps and it can be a lot quicker. So let's try that now. We're gonna click deploy. Now I've got a notification that telling me that that has started. And this time it will be a lot quicker because it's not a full build. We don't have to go through that whole cycle again. All we've got to do is take the code from our version control, push it to our service, and tell our application that that is the new version that we want to host. Now, as a Laravel developer, I use queue workers a lot. So let's deploy one now. We're going to go down to processes, and we're going to click create a process. For this, we're gonna create a background worker. The name doesn't matter, and the custom start command can be whatever you might need it to be. In my case, I'm gonna say php artisan q work. You can allow horizontal scaling and how many instances of this q worker you want, as well as what size you might want it to be. It's quick, it's painless, and suddenly, I don't have to have daemons running on my server or my instance. I can just create new processes that's living within my environment. So I've got my web process and I've got my queue worker running. I'm pretty happy with both of those. But I like to schedule tasks to run every so often. Maybe I'm generating a report. Maybe I'm purging expired API tokens from my database. No matter what it is, I want to be able to deploy that cron process. So let's click to create a new process. Use cron. Name doesn't really matter at this point. Now my custom start command can be php artisan schedule run. We can use any sort of cron expression. It gives you a quick helper and I'm going to use every minute. You can be specific about a time zone and you can say how many instances, then just click deploy. That will do his business, and in the background, that will be created, deployed. Your Laravel application now has access to a cron task. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes we want to deploy a static site. I know I do, especially for marketing purposes. You can see there's different demos that you can quickly click on for the applications and then down the bottom for these static sites. I'm gonna go for Astro because that's my usual static site template. Click deploy, wait for it to be built, wait for it to be deployed, and then I've got access to it. I can click on visit. I've got a static Astro website. Now let's be honest for a minute. Not all of us are gonna be building an application that needs to be online 24 seven, auto scaled to the hilt with a million replicas across different availability zones. It's just not gonna happen. So the option to put your application or your processes into hibernation when there's zero traffic as a way to reduce costs to yourself is absolutely fantastic. Let's go enable that in our dashboard now. As you can see, I'm in my view starter kit. I'm gonna click on settings, I'm gonna update hibernation, and I'm gonna tell it to hibernate the app after five minutes of inactivity. And that's it, that's all I needed to do. If nobody is visiting my application for five minutes or more, then my app's gonna to go to sleep and it's not gonna cost me any money. It's just sitting there in the background, it's turned off. So as you can see, deploying an application can be quite easy. So why not give Savala a go? Go to savala.com, buy $50 of free credits, have a play. It's not gonna cost you anything. You're actually probably gonna enjoy it.